Now that I've given my spoiler-free review in a previous video, it's time to go over my thoughts about the latest Digimon Adventure movie, Digimon Adventure 02 The Beginning. Prior to the movie's release, I was honestly fairly pessimistic since I haven't really enjoyed any of the recent adventure-related releases. I really didn't like Kazuna, and I really didn't like the Digimon Adventure reboot. I thought that Tri was okay at best and terrible at worst, and of course not to mention the fact that I was sceptical about the fact that it's another Digimon Adventure movie that introduced a new chosen child who was there the entire time. My main and quite honestly probably only gripe about this movie was how the movie seems to ignore the existence of the original Chosen, as in the group that were mentioned in the original Digimon Adventure and were further mentioned in Try, with Maki and Daigo being introduced as two of those original Chosen. Considering that timing would place that event as being in the early 90s at the latest, judging by Maki and Daigo's apparent ages, that would be before Ukumon and Louie would have met in 1996. Another issue is that the original Digimon Adventure prequel events happened in 1995, so when that, be that being the moment that the Digimon Adventure Chosen were chosen, since they witnessed that fight, Louis being the first partnership between a Digimon and a human, being in 1996, doesn't quite fit in with the fact that the prequel movie took place a year prior, and that was apparently the moment that actually chose those kids as the chosen children, whereas Ukamon and Louis are claiming to be the reason why all these kids were chosen because Louis had a desire for friends and Ukamon fulfilled that wish by creating more chosen children partners to be his friends. And it was essentially said in the movie that the only reason that the chosen children were chosen and why they met their Digimon partners was to fulfill Louis's wish, which doesn't quite make sense because they were apparently chosen a year before Louis and Ukamon actually made that promise. Which is just one of the things that kind of makes not a lot of sense about Louis and Ukamon being apparently the first chosen, and not to mention the original chosen being a few, quite a few years older than the Adventure and Zero Two children, meaning that that would have happened a few years prior to Louis being chosen. Unless, of course, they happened to have their adventure in the late 90s, just before the original Chosen. But again, that doesn't really aim, like, <laughs> align with the ages of the Chosen in Digimon Adventure. And of course, the original Chosen, when they show up as Maki and Daigo, it's almost like that was in the late 80s. There's also the case of something that Zero Two introduces, which is Iori's dad and Oikawa also kind of have Digimon partners, or at the very least, they had Digimon that they were aware of, and that also happened much earlier than 1996. So there's a few things that don't quite align with Ukamon's claim of being the first Digimon to be partnered with a human, because there's been a few other instances of this. We could say that Ukamon is either lying or Ukamon is, d d doesn't know. Ukamon says that he's aligned with a god, and then of course we know that the original Chosen's Digimon ended up becoming the holy beasts, as in Azulongmon and all the other the four holy beasts. We learn this in the Digimon Adventure novelization, and of course we also learn about it more in Digimon Adventure Try. So the fact that they are more or less the gods as well, it could just mean that Ukamon wasn't privy to all the events that happened prior and just believes that he is the only or the first Digimon to be partnered with a human, even though it did happen quite a few years prior with the original Chosen and the Holy Beasts plus Maki and Bakumon. So that, that is a possibility that Ukamon just doesn't know. Ukamon could be lying, or 
I, I kind of doubt that Ukamon is lying. I honestly just think that Ukamon is just wrong. Like, he just thinks that he is the, the one, but he's actually not. Though then again, the end of the movie, having that sort of promise being undone, resulting in the D3s disappearing, makes me kind of wonder, like, there must be some truth to what Ukamon believes. At the very least, Ukamon might have created the Zero Two children essentially being chosen because the moment that the Zero Two children were chosen was at the earliest, as far as I'm aware, 1999, when we have the likes of Iori and Daisuke. And I don't, Miyaku wasn't chosen until the year 2000, but I believe that Iori was in a plane crash that happened when the digital world was in the human world sky, and then we have Davis who was chosen with the Myotismon takeover of Odaiba. So there are moments that were after this where the children were chosen. So I'm not sure if the movie is saying that Ukamon and Louis effectively chose the Zero Two kids and not so much the original Digimon Adventure 1999 chosen as they were chosen a year prior to Louis and Ukamon meeting in 1996. So there is that. However, a character should have at least mentioned the original Chosen, because we have TK and Kari who were there when Jedi was talking about the original Chosen, and then of course were in Try, where the original Chosen, well, two of the original Chosen were met. So that that feels like a little bit strange that no one mentioned that. We have Hikari mention homeostasis. That was great. For some reason, I did not expect her to mention homeostasis, even though it makes sense, because she's been taken over by homeostasis multiple times. So that was that was fine. But it was weird that nobody mentioned, hey, what about the original Chosen? There could be some, like, time shenanigans going on, because there was a little bit of time shenanigans when Louis was able to revisit Ukamon back in 1996 as his present-day self. But it doesn't quite make sense. Like, they could have just said, oh, um, also Ukamon went back in time and also chose the uh, original Chosen and uh, made Parrotmon appear in the sky. That would have been a fairly, like, weird kind of way to tie that in, but I would have been satisfied with that instead of the someone is either lying or wrong or the writers just oopsied and forgot about the original Chosen or the fact that the 1989 Chosen were chosen in 1995. So th that that's kind of my only gripe. I knew it was going to be something that would annoy me about the movie when they first announced the movie. It was like, he is the first chosen, despite being the same age to the other Zero Two kids, or similar in age. When they first said that, I was like, oh, maybe he's like 40? But as soon as they revealed Louis' character design, I was like, oh no, he is the same age as the rest of the Zero Two cast, or similar-ish in age. So that was something that I knew that would annoy me going in. However, I was worried that it would actually be, like, a huge issue with the movie, but it ended up just being like, oh, maybe Ukamon was just wrong. I can I can ignore that just a little bit. So that was my only gripe. I was surprised by that. Something else I was surprised by was the fact that we didn't get a new Paeltramon evolution. I was honestly expecting us to get new evolutions, uh, for someone, because it's a Digimon movie, of course we have the new Digimon being Ukamon and Ukamon's Megaform, but we didn't get Pyeldramon having like a Megaform or an another Megaform or like a special mode or something along those lines. That was a surprise, not complaining about that because that's just every Digimon adventure always gets a new Omegamon, or maybe I was expecting Omegamon to show up and get a new random form. But they didn't. That didn't happen. Not a not a huge negative or anything. Just something that I was surprised by. I was also surprised by the fact that Silthymon and Shakomon didn't get to their mega forms. Uh, that being Valkyriemon and I guess Vikemon. Uh, Vikemon would be a weird one because we just had him in be and try as Gomon's mega as well. So I was kind of surprised that we didn't get mega evolutions for the other Digimon that for their other Jogress forms. That would have been cool. Uh, but that didn't happen. And then, of course, we also didn't get any armor evolutions appearing in the movie, which was surprising because Zero Two's main mechanic, it, while it has Jogress, we kind of already had Jogress, and we have Jogress in other seasons, the fact that we have 
no armor forms and that being, you know, the main mechanic was kind of a shame. I expect them to pull out maybe Flame Dramon at the very start of the movie and then revert to all the other evolutions, like his adult form, like his Jogress forms, whatever, at the end. Surprised they didn't just pull any of those forms out. That's a shame. I love armor evolutions, but it is what it is. It's not really a negative, but it's just something that was interesting that I noticed. Uh, also the same with the Mega Forms not showing up, and the same as new Digimon, but not, like, new evolutions not showing up. Th those are just kind of, like, minor things that I've noticed, but definitely not gripes. I definitely only really have one gripe about the movie, and that being, is Okamon lying or wrong? I didn't expect this movie to get, honestly, as dark as it did, with Louis's mother being abusive at worst, or just distance at best. And I definitely didn't expect the eye horror in this movie. Uh, I probably should have because of the amount of, like, traumatic kind of things that we got in Digimon Ghost Game, which was, of course, the most recent series of the Digimon anime. I should have kind of expected that they kind of do weird things like that. So, yeah, I was not expecting the eye... I, was, I wasn't I was expecting the amount of focus on the eye. As soon as I, we saw, like, the eye trauma happen, I was like, okay, this is... And then they kept on just going. It kept on getting worse. And I kind of, like, I think what I realised about this movie is that I like Digimon best the more, like, disturbing it is, or, like, the darker it is, which probably says a lot about me. Like, I love Digimon Survive, and I, I went with a bunch of friends, and one of them happened to be another fellow DigiTuber, Digimon Professor, but I was, we were saying afterwards, like, wow, Digimon's kind of been a little bit, little bit dark lately with uh, Digimon Ghost Game having a lot of very graphic things, and we have Digimon Survive, which also got fairly graphic, and this movie got the, the the eye thing, which is just, yeah, um, well done, you made me go, ugh, in a Digimon movie. That was something I did not expect, and coupled with the, uh, the abusive mother, that was kind of like, it, it can't, kind of hit pretty hard for me. It was just, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of surprisingly rough to see. I didn't expect it to do that, uh, but it did. So that was the thing, it made me feel things, and art should make you feel things, and honestly I was feeling things for this movie because I was nostalgic, and nostalgia is a hell of a drug, and I was having a lot of like emotions of like, wow, my kid self is, is watching this movie. It's, it, the 30 year old that I am is not watching this movie, my kid self is watching this movie, I am, I'm remembering everything, and I'm so glad that I saw the dub because that's what I grew up on, and it made me even more nostalgic and even more emotional. Speaking of emotional, um, the, the the scene in, in the movie where the D3s just, like, disappear, like, that hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, these are just, like, little handheld things that they've already said that they didn't need anyway, and they've got the phones that are digivices now. But, oh my gosh, the the, the, the D3, um, yeah, that, that was, that made me a little sad, and it was my favourite digivice growing up, so... I, I I didn't expect to have emotions about the, the Digivice, but uh, I, I certainly did, and that was really surprising. So I had a lot of emotions throughout this. I probably experienced every human emotion in this movie, and I guess that's what a good movie should do. It should make you feel things. Art should make you feel things. You should feel a whole array of emotions when you watch something, and I definitely did with this movie. So we had Louis' backstory hitting home. That was pretty hard for me to watch, but in a, in a kind of good way, I guess. And I was so relieved that we weren't going to have another case of the the chosen who was there the entire time, who's been, been around for decades as well, uh, who has a dead Digimon partner. And I thought that it was going to be another case of, oh, my Digimon partner's dead and now I'm evil, whoopsies, because we just had that with Marky and Manoa. I was so worried that Louis would be just like, ha 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 ha, I am evil, but no, he's just traumatised, but not in an evil way, he's just like regular traumatised, not traumatised, I'm going to kill everyone, traumatised, I'm not going to like kidnap everyone and keep them in a box, like normal traumatised of just like, I am having some issues, uh, a lot of issues, I don't, my eyes kind of looking a bit weird, um, kind of have to wear an eye patch because it's body horror, and, uh, but, he, but he's not evil, he's not going to do anything evil, he's just kind of a little bit sad, which is completely understandable considering everything that he has been through. Uh, the bat scene. Oh my god, how did that, that movie just, uh, anyway, so I was glad that it wasn't just another case of dead Digimon, now he's angry and wants to be the antagonist for this movie, but we didn't get that. 
And I'm glad because, yeah, we just had that with Maki in Try, and then immediately we had the same thing as Maki happen again in Kazuna, which was my main reason why I didn't like Kazuna, because it was just Try again, but with other elements of, like, we had Hurricane Touchdown put in, we had, uh, we had our war game. This movie felt like its own thing. We didn't feel the need to self-plagiarize and have things from other aspects of the franchise. It felt fairly unique in that way, other than, of course, being a Digimon adventure movie, so there's a kid there that's been there the entire time. So, overall, I felt like this movie was a better love letter to the franchise than we've previously had with Digimon Adventure releases. I found that this was not as much of a nostalgia grab and a nostalgia dump like the previous adventure things, like Kazuna, which I just felt was very much just a nostalgia bait. Same with the reboot to some certain extent, and I really appreciated that it was just a love letter. And that's at least how I felt about the movie. I felt like it wasn't just a, hey, look, nostalgia, 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 here, give us money. It felt like something that was actually meaningful and actually, it, it felt, hey, a love letter is a great way to describe it. It felt like a love letter to Digimon Adventure Zero Two and all the stories we've had for Digimon Adventure Zero Two. Speaking of which, something I did not expect was to see uh, Louis is watching the events of probably one of my favorite Digimon movies, which is uh, Revenge of Diaboramon. Did not expect that reference. That made me like, I was in the cinema going, yay! Like, I was just so happy just to see a reference to Revenge of Diaboramon. That was great. I loved that. We also, of course, had Willis show up in the credits, as well as all the other international chosen, or maybe just before the credits. And we also got Dingo from the Digi Destiny of Australia. That was great too. Uh, considering we saw all the international chosen throughout the movie, and I was like, "Where's Dingo? Where is he? Where is he?" And then we got him in the, like the the end of the movie, and I was like, "Yes, representation!" So I was really happy about all those little references there, but they didn't feel too shamelessly trying to get me to feel emotions and nostalgia. Though then again, I was already feeling those emotions and the nostalgia. So the movie got me. It was a really great movie. And I was honestly surprised because, again, I haven't been a fan of a lot of the movies for Digimon Adventure lately. Like, as in trying Kazuna. I also didn't like the reboot. So I was like, this movie is probably not going to be that good. But I ended up loving it. Like, it's a solid 9 out of 10 for me. And I thought that, like, I really liked it afterwards. I'm like, I'm probably going to think about it and I'm probably going to go, oh, no, it's actually not that good. There's this problem. There's this problem. But my problem that I had, that I thought I would have, was the only problem. That being the original Chosen claim just doesn't line up with what we know. But again, Ukamon could just be wrong. Ukamon could have done time shenanigans, but I wish that the movie told us if there was time shenanigans with Ukamon. Until then, I'm just going to assume that Ukamon is just straight up wrong, and that's going to help me sleep at night. So those are my thoughts about the new Zero Two movie. Absolutely see it if you haven't already, but I'm assuming if you're watching this review that is full of spoilers, I'm going to assume that you've probably seen it already. So th there is that. But if you haven't seen it, see it. If you've seen it, see it again. I don't know. But in any case, let me know your thoughts, comments, questions, etc, etc in the comment section below. I would love to hear how other people feel about this movie. I can understand why someone wouldn't like it, but at the same time, I definitely, definitely loved it. So let me know everything you have to say in the comment section below. Like this video for, yes, I finally like a Digimon adventure movie that is released as an adult. Yay! Finally, subscribe if you haven't already. If you have subscribed, tell your friends, tell your neighbours, tell your enemies. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!